Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to this brief discussion of how to choose a frame rate for your motion graphics or visual effects project. Because this is a topic that seems to cause some of you confusion because you don't understand my choice of frame rates and you assume there's something odd or complicated going on. So I'm going to give you the short answer first and that's that unless you're delivering for broadcast television or cinema distribution or a streaming service, then it's pretty safe to say that you can choose a frame rate to suit your preference and it won't make a huge amount of difference. However, I do have a personal preference and I will try to explain that in just one second. So just to give you an overview, if you're delivering for a broadcaster like the BBC, you are obliged to deliver only 25 frames a second. Or if it's UHD, you can also deliver 50 frames a second. That's it. No choice beyond that. Oh, and if you're delivering for HD or SD, then your program has to be interlaced. So that's the BBC. Other broadcast networks will have different specific requirements and they will depend on the individual territory. If you're delivering for DCP cinema projection in the interop standard, you're going to need 24 FPS. However, the SIMT standard allows for a greater range of frame rates, including 24, 25 and 30. And for 4K only, you can also deliver double those frame rates. In other words, 48, 50 and 60. And streaming networks like Netflix also have their own specific requirements, but with a wider range of choices. So you can go from 23,976, which is otherwise known as 23,98, 24, 25, 29.97, 30, 50, 59.4 and 60. So anyway, just to make the obvious point, if you're delivering a program for any of these, you need to check what's required and work within those parameters. But if your distribution is online, then generally speaking, you can choose whatever you want, but it probably does make sense to stick to the standard frame rates rather than experimenting with, I don't know, 37.43, for example. And yes, you can actually get motion to give you a 37.43 project, as I've shown you in the tutorial linked below. And actually I did a test of that and uploaded it to YouTube and it sort of worked. I seriously don't recommend it though. So why do I typically choose 24 frames a second? I'm going to give you three reasons. The first is that 24 FPS is the filmic frame rate. Watching 24 frames a second feels like you're having a cinema experience because that's what most movies have always been and still are. When Peter Jackson chose to shoot The Hobbit in high frame rate, that was specifically 48 FPS, audiences really didn't like the look and pretty much everyone said it looked like video, not film. That's interesting, right? We're so conditioned to think that more is better. Surely twice the standard frame rate is going to look twice as good. But somehow the low frame rate of film still looks right to us and presumably it's because we're responding to the lack of complete smoothness, and we actually prefer that over greater smoothness. Interestingly, even the small 4% difference between 24 and 25 FPS is actually noticeable once you start to get attuned to it. 25 FPS looks more like video and 24 FPS looks more like film. So anyway, that's reason one. Reason two is a surprisingly important one. If, for example, I choose a frame rate of 48 FPS rather than 24 FPS, every second of my clip will take twice as long to render for the obvious reason that I'm trying to render twice as many frames for the same actual duration. Okay, granted, for many little projects, this might not be much of a big deal, but imagine you're working with many layers of high resolution video and lots of complex processing. In other words, imagine you're compositing a typical motion picture visual effect. You're definitely going to be happier working at 24 FPS. And if a director like Peter Jackson comes along and tells you you've got to be working at 48 FPS instead, you'll definitely be grinding your teeth. And obviously that very much applies if you're rendering 3D where a single frame can take hours to complete. So choosing a higher frame rate than you absolutely need is really not a good idea unless you have a very compelling reason to do so. The third reason for preferring 24 FPS is a very simple one. 
24 is a number that's really easy to divide neatly. Compare 25 FPS where half a second is 12.5 frames and a quarter of a second is 6.25 frames and in a frame-based application that starts to get very messy whereas 24 is divisible by both 2 and 3 and that means it's much easier to work with tidy frame numbers. I'll accept that's not a total clinch of an argument for 24 FPS, but I think it's a pretty decent one. Okay, so I hope that explains my default preference for this frame rate, but I will finish by offering a couple of important reasons why I might choose something else. Most of my professional work is for feature film projects, and that's another reason why 24 FPS has become my default. But of course, some feature films here in Europe, documentaries especially, are now shot and finished at 25 FPS. And then of course, I'll need to match my work to the frame rate of the film. So just to make the obvious point that one of your considerations in terms of choosing the right frame rate for a motion graphics or visual effects project is how it's going to fit into the complete project. The other important consideration is that sometimes you need to choose a high frame rate for a very specific technical reason. For example, in the tutorial I've linked to below, I needed to switch to a higher frame rate in order to get a smooth path for a particle emitter. Too low a frame rate and the path looks steppy. So in a case like that, I would render at a high frame rate and then drop that high frame rate clip into my low frame rate final program. In such a case, doubling or indeed trebling the frame rate is the sensible option to choose because it will avoid the inevitable frame rate artifacts of trying to match up frame rates that don't want to go together. So I hope that's answered most of your questions. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.